my different ways I say hello. Hi, my friends. My jungle friends, you guys. How are you doing today? Hey, hey. Looks like the seahorse is back. Yeah, see? Look at you make it for the old three, chapter 11, three videos. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. This may be your last video. I'm sorry, you... Yeah, we may not be bringing you back. Well, I can't really, I really can't bring you back in another video. You know, I got to show some equality. Get it? No pun intended with math. With all the other animals. You know, everybody wants to get their, you know, obviously you're really not camera shy now. That's apparent. Anyway, hey you guys. Well, welcome to another video. Mr. Wara, let's kind of get come back to planet Earth. Okay, let's look at number 12. This will be the last video. It says, write the letter in the box that correctly describes the three-dimensional figure. Obviously, we have uh, four three-dimensional figures there, so I guess they're supposed to fit in each one of them. Well, we talked about this, I think, in just one of the earlier videos, that one significant difference between pyramids and a prism is its faces. So if you look at the faces, you can see that the prisms are made with, that's right, with, with polygon. Lateral faces are polygons. And that's true. I can see the prism right there for B and C. Because you can see that all of the uh, faces here are polygons. Okay? And same with the cube. But with these two, these are both pyramids. So A and D are going to to fit in this category and they're pyramids because they have triangle their faces the lateral faces are triangles yep I know you have more of your little buddies down here oh my goodness now it says mark packed one inch cubes into a box with a volume of 120 cubic inches how many layers of one inch cubes did mark pack okay nice now this is a little bit more challenging. This is what I'm liking. So this entire box here then has a volume of 120 cubic inches. It's good to know. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Always nice to have that. So it's almost like I can start doing the equation with all the information that I do have. I do have the volume. So I can say 120 is going to be equal to that length times width times height. Well, let's see what else we have. It looks like we do have the length here. And it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 for the length. 8 inch. inches, that is. But now we're going to multiply that by the width. Do we have the width? Yes, we do. This looks like 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 inches for the width. And we're going to multiply that by the height. Do we have the height? No, we don't. So what could we do? Well, we could take our 120 and let's just say, let's just make this equal to 24, right? Because 8 times 3 is 24 and make that times H. Well, now we just were down to 3. Well, we know that 24 times H is equal to 120. Well, therefore, 120 divided by 24 is going to give us the H. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that just like that. H is going to be equal to 120 divided by 24. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I happen to know the answer to this because I love 24. Makes nice little good groups. Because if you double that, let's do it that way. 24 and 24 is 48. All right? You guys probably know that. So that's like saying 24 times 2. Well, then two groups of those two multiples of 24 would be another 48. So now we have 2 over here. and We have another 2 that's been multiplied by. So it means 24 times 2, 48. 24 times 2, 48. That's all I've done. That's 96. Now you can see that 96, yeah, 4 more than 20 is going to give you your 120. So that's almost saying just one more. We'll put 24 right there. Now what do we have? We have 5. Is that true? Let's see. 20, carry the 2, it sure is. So we're going to have 5 layers then. 5 layers, that's our height. Cool, I like that problem. Oh, what do we have here? A composite figure is shown. What is the volume of the composite figure? Ah, right, we've done this kind of work before. Okay, you guys are kind of, what's this guy here doing? You know, you're supposed to kind of say, I know you're out of the way, but you really are kind of in the way. Well, we'll put you there. 
And I know you just barely stay out of the way there. We'll leave you. I guess we could write in between you guys. Let's see. All right. It looks like we just have two rectangular prisms. We have that one there, you see, on the bottom, and we have one on the top. It can be divided two different ways. Let me take a look at the dimensions. For the bottom rectangular prism, we have a length of 10 centimeters. We have a width of 6 centimeters, and we have a height of 4 centimeters. So we have all that information. And then I think that's how I'm going to do that bottom one. And then I think I'm just going to do the next step and then do that one. And that it looks like we have, we do have the length of four centimeters. We already have the width is six centimeters because that's the same below. Do you see this? Yes. Okay. They're all the same length again because they all have right angles. Um, so we have that, but do we have the height? We don't. But what they did give us on the step there, though, the height there in between was three centimeters and that's four. So I guess indeed, no, they did give us all the information. They're making these problems pretty easy. So it looks like we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and write out our formula. So I'll do two of them. I'll put volume is equal to, again, I always like to put my formula down. I know. So the first one is going to be 10 times 6 times 4. And the other one's going to be, let's see here. We have the length, which is going to be 4 times 6 times 3. Yeah, this is some nice numbers here. 24 times 3 is 72. Here we have 24 times 10 is 240. I can actually add them from right here. I have 2, 11, carry the 1. Looks like I have 312. 312 cubic centimeters. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I like that answer. I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to say it's my final answer. Looking at it as I double check my work. Looks good. Yoo hoo, yeah. What do we do? Woo hoo, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Number 15. <laughs> Hello there, seahorses. Anyways, this is for number 15A through 15C. Write the name of one quadrilateral from the tiles to complete a true statement. Use each quadrilateral only once. Oh, they put once only. Okay. A blank is always a parallelogram, okay? A blank is always a rhombus, and a blank is never a parallelogram, okay? I'm sorry, the one that stands out to me almost immediately is this one here, the trapezoid. It's never a parallelogram because according to GoMath and the state, a trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel lines, and a parallelogram actually has two sets. So we'll put trapezoid in here. And something here is always a rhombus. Well, you know, on that one there, I remember that we had this in the previous uh, video, didn't we? That a square can always be a rhombus, but a rhombus can't be a square. So a square would go here. Well, now it's kind of process of elimination because we did trapezoid, we've done square. But is that true? Is a rectangle always a parallelogram? Uh, actually, that is true. Every rectangle that you could ever draw in the whole world until you were 80 years old, that's right, would always be a parallelogram. Cool. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. Says Megan's Aquarium has a volume of 4,320 cubic inches, which could be the dimensions of the aquarium. Mark all that apply. Okay, I'm glad they use that word dimensions because we've been using that. We've talked about dimensions, the length, the width, the height. Now here in this case, we have to mark all that apply. I, I This is one of those where you just have to start multiplying, right? Now, 16 times 16, you might think this is kind of strange. I just happen to know that that's 256. Could I take 256 and multiply it by 18? I could. Now just so you know, what you would normally do, you could multiply it through. Let me do it right over here. So you just know. So we have 36. We carry the 3, 6. And then that's going to be 96, right? Placeholder, 6, 1. 6, 15, carry the 1. There's our 256, like I mentioned in here. We're going to go ahead and multiply it through. And we could do an estimate, but I think we'll just go ahead and do it. 8, carry the 4. That's 40, 44. Carry the 4. That's 16. That's 20. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and put in my placeholder. Okay, now I have 6, 5, 2, because this is the identity property of multiplication. Makes that kind of nice. For multiplying, now I'm just going to add, and the 10, here the 1, 6, 4,608. Well, no, A, sorry, you were close, but you didn't, you didn't make it. Sorry. Uh, B, looks like we have 14, 18, 20. Here, at least we could, I would multiply the 20 last because here's your double. That would make that easy. So if I do 14 times 18, that's 32. Carry the 3, 8, that's 11. Placeholder. That's right. And then I have 4 and 1. Again, the identity property. I'm adding. So I end up with 252. Now, if I were to double that number and give it a power of 10, well, 252 double would be 4, what is that, 5,000? No, 5, 504. I'm thinking, thinking, and then you throw on the 0 because it's a power of 10. So I basically said 252 times 2, did my simple fact, and then multiply it by 10. That's all I did. We did this in an earlier lesson, so this should seem like a review. But no, B didn't make it either. B was just a little bit too large. Okay, we're not having much luck so far. So let's look at C. 12 inches by 15 inches by 24. We may just have to multiply all of that through. Uh, let me just go ahead and I'm going to go with on this one here. I think I'm just going to go with the 12 by 15 first. Number seem they might be easier. 10, 5, 6, placeholder to 1. And we end up with 180. And then 180 will come way over here. Uh, times 24, get 0. 8 times 4 is 32. 4, and that's 7. Placeholder, and then I end up with 0. 16, carry the 1, that's 2, that's 3. End up with, how about that, 4,320. Okay, C looks good. What's interesting, they give a lot of these problems that seem really easy. Now this one here, they actually make you do some multiplying here. All right. Oh, I like this one here. Double. So I'm going to do 8 times 27 first. 56. That carry the 5. That's 16. That's 21. Now here I can multiply it by 2, right, and then double. Or I could just multiply it by 20 here. That might be just as easy because you put your 0 down. 12. Carry the 1, 2, 3. Look at that. That was also 4,320. Yeah. Okay. Oh, seahorses, you just barely stayed out of the way. Okay, number 17. Ken keeps paper clips in a box that is the shape of a cube. Okay, each side of the cube is three inches. What is the volume of the box? Well, again, are we getting in this habit? Length times width times height. Every time they ask for volume, we should be thinking, right? Get that formula down. Now, we don't have volume, and that's what we're trying to find out. Now, it says that we have the length. No. Do we have the width? No. Height? No. All they say is each side of the cube is three inches. But there's something extremely important about a cube. I know you were, I know you guys were thinking, a cube is like a square, except it's three-dimensional. Therefore, each side is exactly the same length. They're congruent. So here I'm just doing three times three times three. Tell me that isn't nice. Now, of course, we have 9 times 3, 27. So we end up with 27 cubic inches. Bring her on down. Bring it down. Down, down. Ooh, yes. Seahorses galore. It says Monica used 1-inch cubes to make the rectangular prism shown. For numbers 18A through 18D, Write the value from the tiles that makes each statement true. Each value can be used more than once or not at all. Okie dokie. Well, 18a says each cube has a volume of blank cubic inches. I think you probably know that, right? Each cube here, well, if this is four inches going to cross and five inches in length, and you can see that the 3, the 4, and the 5 actually are the exact number of cubes that are in each one of those dimensions, then that means each cube must be 1 inch. So each cube has a volume of 1 cubic inch. Pretty simple. 
kind of too easy. All right, 18b. Each layer of the prism is made up of, so we're talking about layers. All right, so when I think of layers, I'm thinking height. So I could figure that out by just doing a square, right? Multiplying like we're trying to figure out the area. So 4 times 5, that's 20. That would be 20 cubes then on that layer. That makes sense? 5 times 4? Yeah, it's letting you know. And then it says there are blank layers of cubes. Now, that's our height, and that's going to be 3. Super easy. And then 18D says the volume of the prism then is, well, now that you know that it's 20, you have three layers, multiply 60. I know. The tangle has been going for a little while there in the background. And let us know that, yes, it's the end of yet another review video, chapter review video. And sorry, Seahorse, it's time to say goodbye. Okay, don't cry, you know. And you wouldn't know if you're crying anyway because you live in the sea, okay? So anyway, but with that, my friends, it's been a lot of fun. Now, live long and prosper.